Hello and thank you for tuning in to this week's Mayor's Update. As always, we have a lot of important information to share with you here today, so please feel free to share this video with your friends, family, relatives, and anyone else who you think might find this information helpful over the course of the coming week. We're going to start off by talking about our different paving and construction projects that we have going on here in the city. This past week, Lovewell Street was paved. Uh, with the final coat of pavement that was there, the sidewalks have been completed, the base coat was done, and now the final coat is done. So we are done all of our roadway construction projects over in South Gardner. So that should be all set for now. Then we do have our water main crews up in uh, the Pearl Street area. It seems like they've come all the way to Smith Street, but they'll be doing some patchwork uh, over there and then working on bleeding the lines, just like we saw up by the Uptown Rotary. And uh, continue working in that section as well. We'll be down in the West Street area from Lafayette Square down to Monadnock and in the greater Robillard area as well, finishing up the work that's done there. Do remember that after the water lines are installed, we do have to pressure test them, which means that the water will temporarily run through those pipes to make sure that they can withstand the amount of pressure that comes from the water system. And then we'll also have to bleed the lines a little bit to get some of the air out of them. So if you see water running in those areas, that's not a new break. That's us purposely letting some pressure out of the lines to get that air that's in the pipes out as the water runs through to prevent a water main break from happening. So if you see any work being done in those areas, that's all that is. Crews are still on Parker Street right now. And what they're doing is tying in the buildings that are there to the new water main. So they're connecting the building services themselves to the new pipe that was installed. So if you see them there working on Parker Street, they're not re-digging up and fixing what was just put in. They're actually just adding on to it now that it's been fully tested and pressurized. And we know we can move forward there without any issues in that pipe. We are also going to be working on the Richmond, Graham, and Vernon Street areas as well. Some of you may remember in a previous update, we talked about how after we paved uh, those streets, uh, particularly Graham Street, there was a small gas leak that Unitil noticed, so they have actually paid the city to uh, go back and repave it since they dug it up right after we paved it last year. So we'll be going through with the money they gave us and fixing that to make sure we have a nice smooth surface in that area that was just recently paved to make sure that it stays that way. We are also working with the uh, NCCI Gardner Prison to finish off Chapel Street at the end by Willis Road. Uh, but again, the prison was putting in a new line to their pump station that's on Willis Road, so it wouldn't make sense for us to pave it to have them then come through and rip it up again. Uh, so they have paid us to hold off on paving that. That work seems to be done, so we should be starting in that area of the city soon with uh, regard to paving. So if you see crews in any of those locations or you live in any of those locations, please just keep an eye out and plan your commutes accordingly. Uh, if you run into any of those areas, uh, you may need a couple of extra minutes to and from work that day. We want to uh, remind everyone that the Fall Festival and Sidewalk Sale and the Oktoberfest are returning to Gardner this weekend. Very excited to have those events back after a year off caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Fall Festival and Sidewalk Sale will take place between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Main Street, Pleasant Street, and the section of Parker Street that goes from the downtown square to the lights at Connor Street. The Oktoberfest will run from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, excuse me, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. with uh, the last call taking place at 8 p.m. Over in front of the Yale House, the road will be closed from Connor Street at the lights down to Lafayette Square. You will still be able to use the rotary around Lafayette Square to get to places like Last Minute Gets and Flowers or to circle up from Parker Street down to West Street. That will still remain open as there is no chair luge taking place this year. Uh, we do also want to congratulate those people who the Square 2 Board of Directors has de uh, decided to award at this year's ceremony. Some of you may be familiar that in the springtime, uh, Square 2 at their annual meeting will normally give awards to different of their members in the community who they believe played a part in helping promote the area uh, in the past year. And then normally in August at the sidewalk sale, they'll do their Community Heroes Awards. But since neither of those events were able to happen, they're combining those here and uh, uh, awarding some of their members and our community members at this uh, fall festival. That will take place at noon at the downtown square at the intersection of Central, Pleasant, Parker, and Main, right across from Priscilla's Candy, uh, at noon again this Saturday, uh, September 25th. And we want to thank uh, and congratulate Nails 2000 for receiving the Tough as Nails Award for dealing with all that they have with their closures, both because of the COVID-19 
pandemic and because of the building conditions in the location where they are and still remaining open and committed to downtown Gardner and our residents here. Gardner Federal Credit Union will be receiving the Helping Hands Award for the amount of volunteers that they provide to community events throughout the year. The Community Impact Award will be going to the nursing students from Mount Wachusett Community College for assisting Haywood Hospital and the City of Gardner in the vaccination clinic that took place between February and June here in the city at the PACC. The Mama Love Award will be going to Jamie Floyd, Floyd of the Blue Moon Diner to congratulate her on being open in the city for 21 years. We plan to honor her last year during her 20th anniversary. However, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we were unable to do so, so we'll be awarding her here at this year's ceremony. The Feeding Gardener Soul Award will be given to Suzette Gogan to congratulate her on her retirement after having Suzette's breakfast and lunch in the downtown Gardner area for several years and then retiring during the COVID-19 pandemic. She never really got that send off that she deserved for being open in business and being such a friend to the community for so many years. Uh, so we'll be taking care of that and giving her the recognition she deserves at that time. And lastly, the Community A Hero Award will be going to Annette Sivos. Annette Sivos is a Gardner resident who on June 7th this past year uh, helped rescue a man who was drowning in Dunn State Park. Annette was selected after a statewide search to receive the um, to be, receive a special award from Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito named after an individual who was killed in the September 11th attacks of 2001 uh, that recognizes uh, civilian courage throughout the city in helping save uh, the life of another person. So Annette w received that award from Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito. We would have liked to do something for he her at that event as well. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, they largely restricted who was able to go to that event and every award winner only received two guests. So we were unable to send her congratulations from the city. So we'll be honoring her here in the city in what I think is a very fitting way to recognize the selfless work that she did that day and congratulate her and thank her for her selfless actions on that day. We do have a couple of other events taking place in the city coming up as well. On October 3rd at 1 p.m., the Gardner Relay for Life Committee will be holding their closing uh, ceremony and kickoff event at the same time at the track at Mount Wachusett Community College. We couldn't have our usual relay that we normally have in June this past year because of the pandemic. So this will be a nice way to end the 2021 season for the Relay for Life and kick off the 2022 season all together in what we kind of missed this year. So that will take place at the track at Mount Wachusett Community College on October 3rd at 1 p.m. On October 4th at 6.30 p.m., the Gardner Domestic Violence Task Force along with the Voices of Truth will be holding their annual domestic violence awareness vigil on the front steps of Gardner City Hall. This is something that we at City Hall are very supportive of and want to make sure people know how important an event like this is to raise awareness, not only to help those in need, but to also show how they can get the resources by just knowing that the resources are there. And having an event like this helps put a face to a name to show that the issues that are happening in the community are community issues, not individual issues, and that people who are going through these struggles aren't struggling alone, and they have their city behind them rooting for them as well. So I want to thank the Voices of Truth and the Gardner Domestic Violence Task Force for continuing to do that event at City Hall in the heart of downtown. Gamma will be opening their new facility up at the horse farm on Stone Street on October 6th at 3 p.m. They are currently taking RSVPs on their website. You can RSVP through either the Gardner Chamber of Commerce or by going to Gamma directly. Uh, we also want to congratulate Horrigan's Cleaners, who this coming week on October 1st will be having their 100th anniversary here in the city of Gardner too. Uh, you can contact the Gardner Chamber of Commerce for information on their 100th anniversary celebration as well. Uh, we're going to conclude uh, the update portion of this week's video uh, with just a reminder that the state legislature has voted to require cities and towns that have elections this coming November to offer mail-in voting here in the city of Gardner. If you are interested in voting by mail this year, uh, there is an early voting section on the city's clerk's website at www.gardner-ma.gov. Again, that is for people who choose not to go to the polls on election day, but would like to vote by mail early. There is an application form that you need to fill out and mail that back or drop it off at the city clerk's office in Gardner City Hall located in room 121. Uh, if you need any information on that, you can contact the city clerk's office and speak to either T, John, or Faith, and any of them can answer your questions at that time. 
But that concludes the information portion of this week's update. But we do want to talk a little bit about the location, which is uh, where we're filming today, the Gardening Museum over on Pearl Street uh, at the intersection of Pearl and Green. A couple of these videos, like we've said before, we like to show off some of the different places that we have here in Gardner, and the Gardner Museum truly is one of the hidden gems that we have here in the city that shouldn't be a hidden gem. But sometimes you drive by so often things here in the city that they become so familiar that you kind of put them in the back of your brain and it's just that familiar thing that you pass every day. But do make it a point to stop by and check out what we have to offer here in the city. We have a museum, a college, a golf course, a radio station, a pool, uh, bowling alleys, the movie theater, so much more that people often forget that we have all these amenities here in the city. Uh, but the Gardner Museum, it's a really great place. You can see behind me some of Gardner's history uh, memorialized here. And it's a three, four floor building that's just rich in the story of who we are as a city and what we have to remember what we built off of. Yes, Gardner is what we see today when we drive around, but something got us here today. And you can get a taste of that from coming in this building and seeing the chairs, the paintings, the pictures, the familiar different items that are here, such as the stained glass window of the Star of David that was in the old synagogue over on Pleasant Street not that long ago, but that's all memorialized here. So do make it a point to stop by. It's only $3 for admission to come here, and it really is uh, one of the great wonders that we have here in the city. With that said, we do want to remind you that they do have their fall lecture series currently ongoing here at the museum on Thursday evenings. You are uh, asked to pre-register for these events, so please contact the museum if you're interested in finding out what lectures are being offered and how to register for those events. And then, of course, the annual Festival of Trees will be taking place on November 10th here in the Gardner Museum as well. We normally have several trees that are all for raffle here. The proceeds do go towards the Gardner Museum, but it's just a fun time and a neat way to kick off the holiday Christmas season. And you get a tree out of it in the end. So if it saves you some decorating time, it's worth all the time in the world to stop by and check it out. If you are interested in submitting a tree to the raffle here at the Gardner Museum, you can also contact Mary Anole here at the Gardner Museum and she'll help get you all the information you need to know as well. However, that concludes this week's Mayor's Update. Uh, please get out and enjoy the different amenities that we have to offer here in the city like the Gardner Museum. Uh, and particularly with the fall weather coming, enjoy just the New England of Gardner and getting out and about and seeing the natural wonders that we have here around Crystal Lake at the bike path up at Dunn State Park and some other places that we have here. And until we speak again next week in these updates, I hope uh, everything goes well and you have a great day. Thank you very much.